Hello everyone, I'm Emily Anderson with uh, back here again for another year with the Bridging Program. Uh, we are having a day in the studio to get used to um, what the studio is like. So people have been sitting here being filmed, people have been filming with cameras and we've gotten a tour of the facility. Um, because students will be coming back when they are in their small groups next week. The five awesome heroes will be making a show. And then in um, probably February, another group will. And then in May, another group will. So we're kicking it off today with an interview, um, which we often do. And I am beginning this interview session. And our guest today is Sefakor Komabu Pomiyi. And she, we are here today because, well, I met Sefakor uh, when, when she put out an email. She was encouraging people to be in a book group uh, for Judy Human's Made for Students Rolling Warrior. And that is an amazing biography of the late, great, disability activist Judy Human. So we first met. Sefakor encouraged our, the students, the bridging students, two years ago to read the entire book. We read it again last year. And now Sefakor has her own book, I'm Able. And um, so today we're going to ask her some questions about this amazing book. Sefakor, would you like to say anything to just describe the book right off? Thank you so much, Emily. It's nice to see you again and to also talk about what we normally do. Yes, Amabel is a life-changing book um, that I have written about myself, memoir, as we say it. It's all about the journey that everybody with disability can connect to or every family with disability can connect to. So it is my story, but at the same time, I always say that it's our story. Um, it's a story of changing lives because I wrote it with the fact that there is hope. Mm -hmm. So I expect everybody to connect to this book, not only people with disabilities, but everybody across the globe, be it a teacher in the classroom, a doctor in the health sector, a policymaker, a community member, a church leader, a mox leader, everybody who has something to do with people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And in other words, everybody has something to do with people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And in a way that I always say it, uh, simply because disability is part of humanity, you want to connect to this book and see how real or how connected you can be as a, a human being because whether you like it or not, you are part of this group. Mm -hmm. I always tell my students that disability is the pivot that we are revolving around, talking about class, race, socioeconomic status, anything, all the things that you can think about that maybe separate us, age or whatever, disability is in all that. Mm -hmm. So to me, I'm able, it's telling you that whether you have a disability or not, you are able. Mm -hmm. So it's our story of reality from home to workplace, transportation, hospital, everywhere in our life journey. Thank you. Wow, beautiful. And I have been really enjoying reading this book. It, it is it is, it is a journey and, and the story is so interesting. So I keep returning to it and I'm excited for the students to be reading it and probably future, future um, interviews will go more specifically into the story. Hmm. Um, the students have, last year they were interviewed and they interviewed David Fry, who is a um, disability activist and advocate 
And he has been working with the students this year on inspiring them to tell their story. Yeah. And I wanted to put that out as a question for you. So I think the students who have started writing their stories would love to hear your response to this. Um, why is it important for people with disabilities to tell their story? Thank you for that question. Writing our story means a lot to, this, to the society. In other words, to the communities that we belong to. It is very significant to write your story. Our stories are individual, but they are also communal. As much as we write stories, it's healing first to the person who is writing the story. Every single thing that I talk about in this book, it's a journey that I went through with tears. But today I'm healed. It gives me the fact that I wrote this. It gives me fulfillment. So as much as uh, my target audience is everybody, young or old, I want them to, uh, to be assured that you can be fulfilled, you can feel that contentment, you can feel that self-confidence, that self-discipline, that happiness that you can never find in any bottle. Mm -hmm. So writing your own story is one, empowering for you as a person. Secondly, it's changed perceptions about people around you. People meet me on the way, and when they see this book, they are like, oh, are you the one? Then I'm like, yeah, immediately. I will tell you a scenario that a woman met me or saw me at, uh, in front of Walmart, and she was bringing out money. I was waiting for my ride, and he was bringing out money from <coughs> her purse to give to me because the perception about me when she saw me in the wheelchair is I'm poor, I need money, I'm waiting for arms, right? And I know immediately I'm like, hi mom. And she's like, I'm so sorry, can, can I just give you this? I'm like, oh, would you like to buy my book? This is a book and she was so, you could see traumatized, she's like, whoa. And she said, you wrote this? I said, yeah. And when she wrote, uh, read behind, and she saw that, oh, you are a lecturer at the university, and da, da, da. I'm like, yeah, that is how we change perceptions about ourselves, and people know the value we have in the community. So it changes perception in the community. When you write your own stories, it changes policies. Policies are looked at with a second lens. In this book, I have addressed so many policy issues that I address with tactical um, styles so that anybody who reads this, uh, I had somebody telling me that I am solving the problems in my room. Mm -hmm. Yes. So as a policy maker, she read this and she's thinking twice how she can solve the problem in her room before she goes to the what? Mm -hmm. um, parliament house. That is another level. I can also say that when you write your personal stories, it also changes the history of your family. Um, yes, the history of your family totally. What history are we changing? We are changing the family, the history of negative stories around disabilities. Yeah. Anybody who hears disability knows that it, is, it connotes negative ideologies. Everything around us is negative. We are not productive. We are useless. We are evil children. Those are the things that this book is nullifying. So when you write your own personal story, it's a collective uh, change tool that you are sending to the world. Yeah. So I will say shortly that it's a manual of change that anybody can connect to. Yeah. Whether you have physical disability or invisible disability, which is hidden that nobody can see. Yeah. Wow, thank you for that answer. Thank you. Um, there are three students who would like to each ask you a question. Are you open to that? Why not? Okay. They are my students. So, um, so to get them, we'll have to snap our fingers. 
So Sephacor, so as you know, I met you two years ago when, when, I mean, so when actually also when peer mentors began at Bridging for the very first time, the first time when I, when I, when I started as a peer mentor back then as, back then as, back then as well. Also, when we read Roaring Warrior, started reading Roaring Warrior. So my question for you is, you is that, is that how what was it like growing up when 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 the world wasn't so accessible and before uh, for the disability rights all these disability rights laws were passed worldwide thank you thomas so i would say before and even after because still the world is not accessible to right. us right that makes yes. sense yeah so i would say that it has been a very big deal or hard not to crack, but I can assure you because we have some fighters like the um, ruling warrior that we treated in class, Judy Human, people like, like, yeah, really activists like that. like that, people like that have fought for us. And as you know, we have the 504 today through ADA. And I will connect solely to Ghana, my motherland, that it wasn't easy for us also to have the Disability Act, as we call it, that is Act 715 in Ghana. Looking up to Judy Human and other people from far away as leaders, we had that, what, faith or hope that we can also do it by, what, advocating. So as much as I teach you the self-advocacy, when you are well equipped with that, it leads you to fight systems advocacy. And that is what we do. That is what we are still doing. And that is why this book is still even here because we are changing the narratives around disability through the what? The fights that we go through every single day. It's not possible in the human mind, but the more we put our efforts in it by following the what? The rules on the ground, knowing what we are advocating for, knowing data, knowing people that we can connect to, our target audience who will make the change with us, forming allies, knowing that people are there looking up to us to make that change. As much as you know, not everybody can do advocacy. So that is why you and I, even as we will still find some places not accessible, not only the uh, physical structures, but accessibility is a huge issue across the globe that we are fighting for every single day. And that is the interesting piece that I would say that even after the activists have established uh, some policies for us, you and I are still going to fight seriously to make so many changes today to leave a legacy for the future. So the journey has just started with us. With I'm able, everybody can be able to make the change. Thank you. Excellent. Really, really great, great spot for court. That was amazing. That was absolutely amazing. Now let's now let's welcome the oh, the next person to a person as I snap. About least let's welcome Krithika. Okay. Hi, Tafako. Hi, Kritika. When, when did you get the idea to writing? Yeah. Your book. Thank you, Kritika. When did I get the idea to write my book? That has been a long journey, but I started very early. The idea actually came long time. Uh, most of the time when I tell my story to people, they don't believe it. When I tell people that my daddy ran away from me, especially my students uh, who are struggling, going through the same pain, and I'm trying to comfort them that, hey, you can survive, you can still be yourself and add value to yourself your dignity is important, you can live an independent life. At times they don't get it. They don't understand. They don't see how possible that can be. So it's been a journey long, long time that I've been thinking about it. I need to put my story down because 
people need to connect to the reality because I tell the story with names who are, some of them are alive, that they can ask questions for authentication, right? Or to make it through. And another thing that happened was when COVID struck. When COVID struck, I was so much lonely, not doing anything. And that was a bigger opportunity for me to write because the ideas have been there long time. I had written some points down so many times um, that like, for instance, the, the, the chapter about grieving uh, was when I lost my daughter. But when I am talking to people today that um, this is how I went through it. Because people still see smiles on my face. They don't believe that I went through those hardship, right? So I have some of the points listed down long time ago. But when COVID struck, I just put things together. I was so much um, into it that that was the time that I needed to write it. So during COVID time, it became my joyous moment because I was very much active doing something beneficial to myself while the whole world is in turmoil, you know. But that time was the time that when I woke up, I went to my desk after eating, I would just start writing and it was just coming because it's about me. It's an experience I went through myself and it's something that I have some points down already and it's something that I wanted to do to make a change. So that was when the idea came from long time, just like how you are starting now. Yeah. Yes, just like how you are starting to write your stories now, it is coming bit by bit. And one day we will have a book from Critica and I can't wait to read your story. I can't wait to read it. So that is how long it has taken, but it will come um, to an end one day. Thank you for that question. Stop. No? Hi, Sapricor. Hi, how are you? Good. My question is for you is what is your favorite book? What is your favorite part of your book? Hmm. That's a good question. <laughs> ah. I'm able. The favorite chapter, the favorite part of my book will be chapter four. All the, all the chapters are very dear to my heart. They all carry some weight. But I will say chapter four is where I can connect to with you. Yeah. Because chapter four, the mirror, is where my mom actually built me up to become who I am today. What I'm giving you in terms of self-advocacy, my mom did that for me in my bedroom. And the mirror talks about our cultural piece of it that when you are called at dawn, like 5, 30, 6, thereabout, and you are called by your parents when they come to your bedroom and call you and say, wake up, let's talk. That is the point that is in the mirror. That was how my mom built my self-advocacy from the bedroom. That's why I always tell you people that it starts from home, especially when you have that as something strong that you can go out with it. So the mirror shared the part of how my mom calls and gives me the mirror, gives me the mirror to look into at dawn. And she still tells me, even though I haven't washed my face or cleaned up, right? She tells me that look at yourself in the mirror. You are my beautiful doctor. By then I wasn't a doctor, right? You are so beautiful. My mom tells me that I'm the most beautiful child in the world. Yes. By then I wasn't even walking. I was still crawling when I got a polio, right? She would tell me every good thing that a child should hear every day in the morning before you go out to the garbage before you go out to the community that people will throw garbages on you so the mirror built me from my bedroom because she assured me she tells me 
you will do this, you will do that, you, I mean, great things. You will do that and that. And when I wake up every single day, that is what rings in my mind. Knowing very well that I can't, I don't know how I will achieve those things, but I was assured by my mom. Knowing very well that my dad was nowhere to be found, he ran away, but I still believe in my mom. My mom believes in me. So self-advocacy is very powerful. That is why um, I wish every parent, whether um, they are both together or not, should really have a way of giving that gift to the child from the beginning. Because when you have that tool from home, it's very much empowering. So nobody can tell me that I can tell me that I am not uh, beautiful, right? Yeah, nobody can tell me that. I always believe that I'm the most beautiful girl because my mom told me from my bedroom. I know that I am very intelligent, even though I don't know certain things. But my mom made me aware. She actually psyched me to just believe in myself, to know that despite the fact that my legs are paralyzed, I can still be productive and live an independent life with dignity one day. So I would say that is the chapter which really um, talks to me most, especially connecting to what I teach you or what I work with you on to build you. That is a chapter that I will comment to. Thank you for that question. It's a good question. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you. So much. Thank you. <laughs>